Hi, I'm Kimberly Swisher, and in this video, I'm introducing a tool called Google Colab and showing you how you might use it in teaching and learning environments for coding and data science and artificial intelligence. This video is intended for teachers and students who are looking for a non-technical overview of what Colab is, what it does, so that you can evaluate whether you want to use it in your classrooms and your projects. OK, what is Google Colab? You can think of it as a Google Doc, but for writing and sharing code. So here it is. It's right here. Like a Google Doc, it's right in your browser. It's free, and you only need a Gmail account to access it. Colab also allows you to save your work in Drive so you can return to it later, and just like Google Docs, share it with just a link. It's actually a revision of a project called Jupyter, a Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter is a powerful tool for writing code because it allows the programmers to have code interspersed with text and images and uh, explanations. So this is really powerful for teaching and learning because you can have a little bit of code with a little bit of explanation followed by a little bit more code. The coding language in Google Colab is called Python, which is a really common language. In fact, uh, over the past 10 to 15 years, uh, it has soared in popularity, and it is currently, spoiler alert, the most popular programming language. So you can see this, Python's the blue one here. We'll watch it kind of raise in popularity. You notice all of these other languages that you've maybe heard of before, Java, JavaScript, C++. So Python and Google Colab, this is not some obscure language or tool, right, the coding and learning that's happening in Colab is directly applicable to the real world. Colab released quietly in 2017. It's a young project, and it's growing in popularity, not decreasing. So you can expect it to be around a while and for it to keep improving. So, but why? What can you actually do in Google Colab? So you can run and write code in Python, clearly. So if you wanted, you could use it as a tool to learn Python, to learn beginning computer programming. But most professional use of Colab is for data science and machine learning. So data science, more or less, is looking for patterns in large data sets and then using what you learn to make, hopefully, good, better decisions. And machine learning, at its core, is programming a computer with examples, not instructions. So you build models out of things you already know, existing examples and information. And then you show them to the computer so that the computer learns to make good guesses about what you're asking it to, to determine. So for example, in Colab, you could write some code to tell if you showed an image, if that image is your cat or your dog. Or if you wanted, you could create your own text, like this, oh, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second, close that. Um, uh, like this example here, they have taken a, a bunch of Shakespeare uh, plays and given it to the algorithm, and then asking, they ask the algorithm to then uh, write its own fan fiction, right? We make a guess about what, uh, what a Shakespeare play should look like. So, because Colab can do all of these things, and because it's a professional tool, there is a, a, a bit of a learning curve, so you should know that there are a few things that you'll have to solve. Right, like when I opened it up, it said runtime disconnected, which happens sometimes, and then you have to know that you have to go back up to click reconnect up here. Um, you also, uh, you know, some, my notes say sometimes you get warnings that you have to evaluate. Okay, so for example, I'm going to try to make some, some Shakespeare here. We'll try to vectorize this text. And it says, hey, this notebook was not authorized, authored, sorry, by Google. Um, you just have to say, okay, it's fine. Also, this, uh, this code that I just tried to run didn't run, and that's because I have to run code in order. And if I forget to do that, I it gives me an error, and it doesn't say you know, kindly, hey, you forgot to run the setup function. It just it gives me this error here, right? So uh, the, the error, I wish that there would be a pop-up box that would say, hey, buddy, you forgot to run the setup function, but there's not. 
also text the text uh, boxes are a little bit funky so let's add one here right when I add a text box you're actually uh, programming in a nifty language called Markdown. So it looks a little funky. There's a, I'm typing here, there's a preview over here. Uh, it's, it, but it works really well. So uh, despite, by the way, its professional and powerful nature, you may have noticed Corgi and Kitten mode. We have our Corgis and Kittens running across the top of our screen. And if you type fast enough and long enough, Colab will reward you with fireworks. Let's try it. Ah, fireworks. Yes. Appendix. I realized maybe some of you don't want the kittens and corgis. How do you turn them off? Go up to settings. Go to miscellaneous. This powers uh, fireworks and no quarries, no kitties.